So I'm going to talk about audiovisual preservation, and I'm going to talk about best practices and uh, kind of the role of innovation in our field. And I don't have any slides, and I'm just going to read off my phone my prepared remarks. <clears throat> as like the notifications of my tweet references come in at the top. Uh. <laughs> All right, so during my first full-time archival gig, I worked with a large audio collection. And in adherence to the best practices of my community, I would digitize audio tapes to broadcast WAV files. Uh, as I was a new archivist and working as the only archivist in my organization, there was a sense of relief when I could you know, defer my decisions to these best practices. Um, you know, having best practices in our community can be trusted, they can develop consensus, um, but in a way they can also kind of have expiration dates. Uh, so when I was discussing um, the audio workflow of an IT coworker, I heard about FLAC. Uh, FLAC is a free lossless audio codec that stores audio very efficiently and integrates a lot of fixity information, like a lot of internal checksums, um, and a lot of preservation features. Uh, so when I heard about this, um, and I was discussing it with him, my coworker was kind of confused at my justification of the broadcast wave format, and he made a sincere effort to demonstrate all the features about FLAC and try to compel me. And honestly, my ability to defend my decision was a bit limited. I wasn't exactly sure what to, what to say in this practice. Um, and I should say that I don't mean to imply broadcast wave format is is not an ideal choice. It's one of my two favorite recommendations for audio preservation formats. Um, but as I struggled to defend my choice, I realized that I was accepting a recommendation as a best practice blindly. Uh, we went on to debate preservation objectives and the advantages and disadvantages of one format over another. Uh, broadcast Wave was certainly a best practice in digital audio archiving, but by the end of the conversation, I was questioning why I was defending it in this way. I reviewed the listservs of the archival communities, and there was little or no mention of FLAC. And in a context like that, when I asked, it was almost like no one has ever heard of FLAC before. There was a reaction of disruption, as if, as a community, we've already decided, so why are you asking about this? As an archivist, I, had to, I also had to decide how to store lots of data. And at the time, the best practice appeared not to use LTO tapes or hard drives, but to use gold CDs. So I got hundreds of gold CDs. I thought I was like going to save everything for hundreds of years this way. And right now, all that data is like all transferred onto LTO tapes. <laughs> um, like the community buzzed at the time of stories of hard drive failures and the sustainability of, of gold CDs um, and claims that they would resist decomposition for hundreds of years. Um, I considered this, but with consensus of my best colleagues, decided to avoid that best practice and just get an LTO drive, even though the community of those archivists using them uh, was very limited at the point. Uh, this made me realize that there can be a danger in holding onto a best practice too tightly in a, in, in a spirit of permanence, while such practices actually should have expiration dates. A best practice is only a best practice for now. Uh, we should invest more in sustaining archival collections than we spend in sustaining our practices. Um, it won't matter if a gold CD lasts hundreds of years if I'm going to decide to rip them all to LTO tape a couple years later anyway. I realize that working to make uh, better practices is far more meaningful to work than implementing best practices. As practitioners, we should balance the utilization of a best practice with an investment of time and momentum in generating better ones. Archivists uh, struggle to sustain media and metadata into the future. However, the practices and systems we use to do this aren't worthy of the same struggle. If a best practice is stale, outdated, or exhibits a potential to be improved upon, then let's do it. Let's replace it and get something better. Uh, there's no time to wait for the chance to be a consumer of a miracle solution or product. We need to be constantly nitpicking, justifying, contributing, and sharing our solutions. Often archivists work um, on new technological challenges and must quickly adopt the tools of related communities, uh, such as adopting tools made by the broadcast community or made for video editors or for creative work. Uh, but as we know from trying to like update our operating system, thanks Mac OS Catalina, um, we know the pain of trying to maintain these tools once the related community has moved on. I acknowledge that archivists have to grab onto what works to get the job done, um, but we can be more strongly empowered by creating, contributing, and supporting tools ourselves. 
Just as we need to open our videotape players and projectors to understand them and to tinker and to fix, and just as long as we uh, need to run our hands along a film print on a bench or open a video cassette to do repairs, we have a similar need of our digital equivalents. Whether it's analog or digital, we need to nurture our own hackers. Bringing innovation into one's work can produce uh, meaningful personal accomplishments, but it's still more meaningful if such innovations can be a solution shared with others. However, even more impactful innovations may be those that can act as a building block uh, or a foothold for others to learn upon or build from. from for innovation within a community, being a contributor or a supporter can have a bigger impact than trying to be a lone pioneer. When archivists require services from a vendor, a coworker, or a specialist, we may demand a deployment of meticulous and precise, reliable best practices. But while we want the results of the best practice, we need to give space for our experimentation. We need to give space for innovation so that we can improve upon those practices, even if it makes the ongoing work a bit inconsistent just because, of its just because it's improving or evolving. Uh, back in uh, 2012 and 2013, a number of us uh, worked to contribute ideas, testing, documentation, and code to version three of the FFV1 lossless video codec. Uh, this was at a time that JPEG 2000 was frequently referred to as the best practice for archival video compression. Sometimes it felt like our efforts at the time weren't fully welcome, as if contributing to another practice only derails the best one. We'd hear things like, I asked around and no one has ever heard of FFV1. Audiovisual preservation is a community where we lament about the digital dark age in one room and we discuss the opportunities of digital preservation in the next one. I'm grateful for the good work of our field's instigators and contrarians, for those who foster innovation through supportive skill sharing rather than a demonstration of exclusive expertise and knowledge. The field of audiovisual preservation, though, contains its share of discouragement to innovation. Trying to improve upon our existing opportunities can be met with resistance by those who consider that further research and innovation are not needed in an area that has already seen a pioneer or found a conceptual best practice, or by those who consider innovation as only credible if it comes from a so-called expert. Additionally, organizing our communities under uncooperative terms such as analog versus digital or open versus proprietary or JPEG 2000 versus FFV1 only limits our opportunities to work stronger together. Best practices can get better, gatekeepers can be surpassed, and we together can innovate for ourselves. In the film uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, uh, Wonka is demonstrating the innovation of a lickable fruity wallpaper, and Veronica Salt ridicules him to claim that nobody has ever heard of a snozberry before. Uh, Willy Wonka changes his tone and he quotes author O'Shaughnessy to assert, we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of the dreams. Uh, to the extent we can put ourselves into action as innovators, archivists, activists, and active collaborators, please make music and please dream dreams. All right, thanks for coming to No Time to Wait. Nice to speak with you. Thank you.